स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया okay good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to continue my discussion on the analysis of second variation of the functional namely given an extremal y of the functional can we determine the nature of the extremal so so this is the discussion on second variation uh, continued so please recall that in my last lecture we ended our lecture on uh, the introduction to the legendre condition so recall the legendre condition that if i am given y being an extremal so if y is an extremal then then we y is a minimum implies that so y is an extremal of j which is given by integral of f with the fixed boundary points and y being minimum leads to the condition that the second derivative of f uh, with respect to y prime is non negative right we saw that this was a good starting point to look at the nature of the extrema but we also saw uh, we starting uh, this lecture we will also see that this is not uh, a a complete condition and hence later on we will develop a complete condition to determine the nature of the extremal okay so let us continue uh, our discussion on the legendre condition so the first example that i have is let us look at this uh, so consider consider this fixed point uh, fixed point uh, problem where i have to uh, determine the nature of the extremal so i am given the functional of the form integral from 0 to l y prime square minus y square dx and further i am given that uh, i am given the boundary condition as follows so the boundary conditions are y of 0 is equal to y of l is equal to 0 and further i am also given that l is greater than pi okay we'll see why this condition is needed okay so so if we were to look at uh, the second variation so if we were to look at the second variation the second variation involved uh, uh, involved this following quantity so it is eta prime square uh, f of y prime y prime plus 2 eta eta prime f of y y prime plus eta square f of y y and this is integrated with respect to dx from x0 to x1 so once we plug in all these uh, partial derivatives i am going to get that this is also equal to integral of eta prime square minus eta square uh, dx from x0 to x1 and i see that uh, let us say let us uh, in particular uh, i just want to mention that all these partial derivatives are as follows so this is 2 so this is certainly bigger than 0 and this is 0 uh, just taking the various partial derivatives and this is minus 2 so that is how we get so this is 2 times the following quantity now suppose suppose i take my eta of x to be uh, to be sin pi x by l now the reason i have taken this sort of a function note that eta at 0 eta at 0 and eta at l they vanish so this is a good choice for our perturbation function and this means that so this is j of eta comma y so this means that for this uh, particular uh, eta star let's let's call this as eta star my second variation of j at eta star comma y turns out to be i'll just plug in the values 
I get that this is integral 0 to L pi by L whole square uh, cos square pi x by L uh, minus sin square pi x by L. I see that this is also equal to once I integrate uh, this turns out to be 1 by 4 uh, pi square minus L square. Now, notice that we had chosen L to be bigger than pi. For this condition, this will be uh, this will be strictly less than 0. So, the functional the second variation of the functional is negative, but but my second uh, derivative with respect to y prime of the integrand is 2 which is positive. So, certainly the Lagrange sorry the Legendre condition holds, but we are getting the second variation to be negative definite. Now, it turns out that one of the extremals. So, note that y equal to 0 which is an extremal which is an extremal or the solution to the Euler Lagrange uh, to the Euler Lagrange this does not give the minimum right. So, this is the implication of the non obedience of the Legendre uh, the, the fallout of the Legendre condition here which means that uh, although the Legendre condition holds we are getting uh, the second well we are getting the second variation negative, but the Legendre condition holds and uh, the, the implication being that we have one solution to the Euler Lagrange which is not the minimum right. So, the moral here is that Legendre condition is mainly a point wise restriction it is not a restriction uh, which is global in character right or which holds for all points x uh, in the entire interval under, under consideration. So, we are now going to derive a result which is global in character, but which also utilizes the advantage or uh, the usefulness of Legendre condition. Okay. So, that condition that we are after is the so called Jacobi necessary condition. The Jacobi necessary condition. Uh, so, as I just said, so throughout our discussion I am going to only talk about uh, about deriving uh, the minima from the extrema. Results are derived for minima this is without loss of generality without loss of generality. A similar set of arguments will hold for maxima with the signs reversed. Okay. So, the Legendre condition as I just said is a point wise restriction. The Legendre condition is a point wise restriction. The Legendre condition is a point wise restriction. Uh, we saw that depending on the values of x uh, attained from the interval, the, uh, the second derivative of f with respect to y prime will either be positive or negative right and even if it is positive does not guarantee that we are going to get uh, we are going to get a positive definite second variation right. So, Legendre condition is definitely not the complete solution. So, we are going to look at so we need we need necessary as well as sufficient conditions which is global in character conditions global in character which means that the condition should hold for all x in the interval from x naught to x 1 the interval under consideration right. So, the goal is as follows. Uh, so, so this is what we need. So, we are after a global necessary and sufficient condition and the starting point is our Morse lemma uh, namely we are going to appeal to the Morse 0 saddle uh, extended to the infinite dimensional case right. So, we have looked at the Morse result. Morse lemma for the finite dimensional case. So, the goal to achieve this goal we are going to uh, to achieve to achieve our goal we are going to appeal to the Morse the Morse 0 saddle we are going to achieve our goal via Morse 0, zero saddle case which is for the infinite dimensional function space 
infinite dimension function space. Uh, that is, we are going to by, by appealing to Morse zero saddle case, we are going to 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 convert. We are going to convert our second variation, our second variation of j into into a following form. We are going to change our del square j of eta comma y equal to a form which is integral from x naught to x 1 f of y prime y prime gamma square d x right. Where gamma is a real valued function which means that the sign of the second variation will now be completely determined by the sign of the second derivative of f with respect to y prime provided we are able to reduce to this form that I have shown right. So, let me let me call this form 1 right. So, that is our goal. So, goal uh, goal to achieve right. So, goal to achieve ok. So, then also uh, some one another property of gamma that we need is that gamma of course, gamma is a real valued function. So, it is a function it is a function of x uh, eta and y y being our extremal. So, gamma is a function of these we seek gamma we seek gamma real and identically 0 real and identically 0 we seek gamma real and identically 0 only if only if eta is 0 in the interval from x 0 to x 1 right. So, so which means that the sign so this this uh, well if we are able to find such a gamma which is real valued and vanishes for the case when eta vanishes then the sign we are guaranteeing that the sign of the second variation depends uh, depends completely on the sign of the second derivative f y prime y prime right ok. So, let us let us now look at what is our se second variation. So, this is from our previous lecture. So, our second variation del square j is integral from x 0 to x 1 eta square of f of y y minus d d x of f of y y prime plus eta prime square f of y prime y prime and this is uh, this is evaluate integrated with respect to x. Now, let me call this expression as b. So, then my second variation is as follows. So, this is integral from x 0 to x 1 eta prime square f y prime y prime plus b times uh, b times eta square this is integrated with respect to x ok. So, so let me call this form of the second variation by 2 let me denote it by 2 and now I am going to do a small trick notice the following note that eta vanishes at the boundary right. So, eta is a perturbation. So, which means which means that for this observation implies for any smooth function any smooth function all I need is the continuity of the function and later on we will also see we also need uh, the differentiability of the function at least first order differentiable. So, for any smooth function uh, it implies that the condition for any smooth function the condition 2 the condition 2 is not changed uh, is not changed not changed if my if my integrand to the functional integrand is modified modified as follows. So, instead of the original integrand. So, let us look at the original integrand. My original integrand is f of f of y prime y prime 
eta square plus b of uh, eta. Uh, so, this one was f of y prime y prime eta prime square and this is b of eta square. Now, this was my original uh, integrand into and then if I add this quantity w eta square whole prime. Note that the integral of this quantity w eta square whole prime dx is the evaluation of this quantity from x0 to x1 and due to this, this uh, boundary condition this vanishes right. So, this uh, the integrand this the integrand uh, in in our 2 is identically equal to this new this new integrand right. So, this was our original integrand which we have highlighted and the new integrand includes this additional quantity which is not going to change our integral right. So, so we want so we want that this is also equal to the following final quantity. So, this is what we want right. So, this is what we want let me call this expression as 3 right. So, what we want is we want to find. Uh, so, the idea is we have to find omega such that 3 holds for some gamma, some function, some real valued, real valued function gamma, right. So, this is our goal. Now, notice that. Uh, notice that. So, what have we got? Uh, so, to uh, well, well, so, so from 3, what we get is the following. We can, we can uh, take this common out, this quantity f y prime y prime. So, f y prime y prime taken common out I get the quantities eta prime square plus uh, plus b plus omega uh, eta square. So, I can uh, I can well omega prime divided by f of y prime y prime. Note that uh, the third quantity can be differentiated using product rule. The first term is already absorbed here the other term is plus 2 omega by f y prime y prime eta eta prime right. So, this is set equal to. So, note that this is our expression 3 right ok. So, expression 3 is as follows we see that let me call this as 4. So, expression so, I call this as expression 4. Now, so all we need to do is this quantity inside the bracket that we have, we have to reduce it into a perfect square of some function. So, that is possible if the following holds. So, suppose, suppose my w satisfies, suppose my w satisfies the ODE given by uh, w square equals f y prime y prime uh, b plus w right. If that is the case I see that uh, this is for all x in the interval x naught to x 1. So, suppose this this is true then I can reduce. So, then 4 4 is uh, so let me call this o d e by 5. So, if 5 holds then 4 is identically equal to f y prime y prime times eta prime plus omega eta divided by f y prime y prime whole square right. So, my obvious choice for gamma in that case will be this quantity inside the bracket. So, if I were to find a w such that w satisfies this ordinary differential equation which is a first order non-linear equation then I am guaranteed that I can get a gamma such that I can reduce the quantity inside the bracket, uh, I can reduce the quantity inside the bracket given by 4 into a perfect square right. And on top of that suppose we have 
the strengthened legendary condition. Suppose further, suppose further uh, the strengthened legendary condition, the strengthened legendary condition holds, holds, right? Uh, that is, that is f of y prime, y prime is strictly greater than zero, right? So then, then it implies that del square j, uh, del square j comes out to be, uh, to be uh, strictly positive, right? Uh, strictly positive right away. So, so the conclusion is the following for for our positive definiteness for our positive definiteness of the second variation of j I need that there is a solution uh, there is a solution to 5. For the positive definiteness of j I need a solution to 5. Okay. Now, let us also look at, so if that is the case, let me also choose my function gamma to be the quantity that I found out inside the bracket. So, gamma is eta prime plus omega by f y prime y prime eta. So, we choose this gamma, right. So, if we do that, let me call this 6. Uh, now, so, so, so it, it turns out that gamma is 0. So, when is gamma 0? When eta is going to satisfy the OD whose expression is given by 6, right? So, gamma is 0 when, when eta plus omega e f y prime y prime eta, this is 0. Now, further uh, we know that eta, the function eta is smooth, right? Which means that it contains it uh, all its de derivatives, at least the first derivative as well as the function itself is continuous and also that, uh, uh, so this is all given. So, also that eta vanishes at the boundary, right, e eta vanishes at the boundary, which means that this is a first order OD, then, then by Picard's theorem, a standard theorem in our uh, theory to uh, first order linear OD systems, by Picard, Picard's existence theorem there exists a solution, a solution eta, uh, well in fact now there exists a unique solution because I am as, I have that both the function as well as its derivative are continuous. So, there exists a unique solution eta, eta satisfying, satisfying the boundary condition which is given by this bracketed quantity, right. Now, I can see that one solution to this ODE given by the expression in 6 is eta equal to 0, right. So, since eta is a unique solution, then eta is identically 0 is our is our unique solution uh, that we are after which satisfies the boundary condition as well, right. So, which means the following, the conclusion here is that the grand conclusion out of this small discussion is that gamma equal to 0 if, if and only if eta is 0, right. So, gamma, uh, gamma is 0, no, that is only one way. So, gamma is 0 only if eta is 0, right and gamma we know that is a real valued function, okay. So, then let me, let me summarize our discussion in the form of a small result. Uh, let me call this as a lemma. So, the result is as follows right. The result is, so let, let my function f be a smooth function, be a smooth function of x, y, y prime and let, let my function y be, be a smooth be a smooth extrema, extremal, right. Let my function y be a smooth extremal for my functional j given by integral from x naught to x 1 f of x y y prime d x such that my strengthened Legendre condition holds. Then, 
this is for all points on the interval x naught to x 1. Then if there exists, if I can find a solution to my ODE that I had just mentioned satisfying the solution to om the ODE 5. So, if there exists a solution to ODE 5 that I have mentioned uh, the slide before on the entire interval, it implies that in this case my second variation, my second variation will be positive is positive definite. right? So, all I have to do is to find the solution to the ODE that we had assumed right? and provided that the solution exists. right? So, let us now focus on the solution to the ODE. So, so what is the ODE again? So, let me write down. So, the ODE 5 is omega square is equal to f y prime y prime uh, b plus omega prime. So, this is my ODE, this is for all x in the interval x naught to x 1. Notice that OD, this ODE is the famous, uh, it is in the form of a famous Riccati equation, the Riccati equation and secondly this is also a first order ODE, first order non-linear ODE because of the presence of this omega square terms. So, the first step that we will do is we are going to change it into a linear ODE. Uh, in order to satisfactorily find the solution to it right so so we use substitute we substitute omega which is equal to u prime by u times f y prime y prime right so in this case my 5 is identical to the following my expression 5 is d d x times f y prime y prime u prime uh, minus b of u is equal to 0, where, where my quantity b is f of y y minus uh, the total derivative, the ordinary derivative of with respect to x of f y prime y y prime. right? So, this is my, my b. Okay. So, note that this is, this is a, f, this is a second order, uh, second order linear second order linear differential equation and also known as the Jacobi the Jacobi accessory equation the Jacobi accessory equation right so so this is certainly a, a step forward in solution to the od because this is slightly easier to solve okay so then let us let me call this this od expression let us see what equation number we have gone so far. We have until 6. So, let me call this ODE expression is ODE by 7. right? This is also known as the famous Jacobi accessory equation or I will in short term note it as JAE. So, from now on JAE will denote the equation 7 or the Jacobi accessory equation. Okay. So, some of the properties of JAE, let me uh, mention some of the properties. So, the first property is that the smoothness, the smoothness of f implies that uh, since f is smooth, the first, the second derivative of f with respect to y prime and b, uh, these are also smooth, right? And uh, further, uh, we have also assumed that the Legendre, the strengthened Legendre condition holds which means that the coefficient of u prime in this derivative is a non zero which means that uh, that the solution to this equation will be non singular or uh, the problem is non singular there is a solution to this problem right so my strengthened the strengthened legendre condition implies uh, problem is non singular problem is non singular right and suppose we are given an initial uh, initial value uh, suppose we are given an initial condition to this equation then my continuity of the function f 
uh, uh, will guarantee via Picard's theorem that that there is a unique solution in uh, in a neighborhood around that initial point. So, what I just said is the following given given initial values initial values u naught let us say which is u of x naught and u naught prime which is u prime at x naught given initial values my Picard's theorem will guarantee my Picard's theorem guarantees my Picard's theorem guarantees uniqueness of solution uniqueness of solution right ok in a small neighborhood in a small neighborhood right neighborhood of x naught ok ok so then then moreover uh, it turns out that since the solution is smooth, I can extend this uniqueness uh, in a small neighborhood around this point x naught to the entire interval x naught to x 1 right. So, due uh, the uniqueness the uniqueness of the solution the uniqueness of the of solution to our equation 7 can be extended can be extended uh, uh, in the entire interval x naught to x 1 uh, via via the standard arguments of the continuity as well as the continuously different continuous differentiability of uh, of the solution. The solution that you are solving will be continuous because the coefficients of the ODE are continuously differentiable. Okay. So, then finally, uh, another property is note that the Jacobi accessory equation is a second order linear differential equation which means that there will be two linearly independent solutions or any linear combination of the two linearly independent solution will also be a solution to this equation. right? So, we get a family of solutions. So, suppose for any for any two linearly independent solutions u 1 u 2 I see that the solution u which is alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 is a linearly independent solution of the problem. Okay, so, so, that is it in terms of the solution to the Jacobi accessory equation.